to Health Tales for Healthy Tales, your place for animal and human wellness. I'm your host, Piper Petunia Picker, and today we have a very special guest, my sister Jake Picker, creator of the YouTube channel Bartonella Babe. Her humorous and informative videos address the emerging infectious disease, Bartonellosis, and its importance in human and animal health. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Today I want to ask you about the occupational risk of infection with Bartonella for veterinarians and others who work with animals. But first, can you tell our audience a little bit more about Bartonella? Sure. So if your viewers are familiar with Bartonella at all, they probably know it as the bacteria that causes cat scratch disease. Cat scratch disease typically occurs after an infected cat scratches or bites. It is often characterized by swollen lymph nodes, a bumper blister at the site of infection, and fever. Isn't there a growing body of evidence that Bartonella can cause a wider array of symptoms than just cat scratch disease? Yes, and these can be waxy and waning or chronic, rheumatological, neurological, psychiatric, ocular, and general symptoms. Because cat scratch disease is described as self-limiting, researchers are moved, moving away from this term and using the term Bartonellosis to describe these chronic and often disabling disease manifestations. For those of you who don't know, Jake has a video that describes symptoms of Bartonellosis and gives an overview of the research on human infections. I will put a link to it in the top right corner of your screen. Jake, what can the literature tell us about the occupational risks associated with infection with Bartonella for those who work closely with animals such as veterinarians, veterinary staff, groomers, trainers, and shelter and rescue personnel? That's a great question, Piper, but before I answer it, I think your viewers need to know the story of how veterinarians became the first group of immunocompetent patients in which human Bartonellosis was studied. Great! Would love to hear it! So our story begins with Dr. Ed Breichwert. He is a professor of infectious disease and medicine at North Carolina State University College of Veterinary Medicine. He actually was the first to discover Bartonella infection in a dog, and he developed a growth medium that helps foster the growth of Bartonella to allow it to be more effectively detected through PCR methods. As he gave lectures at veterinary conferences about the new diagnostic method for dogs, veterinarians would approach him asking if they might also be infected with Bartonella. According to Dr. Breitscher, if he gave a lecture to about 100 veterinarians, three or four would approach him afterwards. Wow, and so this is how researchers began to look at Bartonella as a potential cause of human disease in immunocompetent individuals. And veterinarians were the perfect study population? Exactly. One of the first studies published on people with occupational animal contact was published in the CDC's peer-reviewed journal Emerging Infectious Diseases in 2007. Of 42 people tested, 17 were found to be bacteremic with Bartonella. All 14 people reported intermittent or chronic clinical symptoms such as fatigue, muscle pain, memory problems, and pins and needles. So some people are disabled by Bartonellosis? And other people just feel like dog doo-doo now and then? <laughs> yes. So since that study, Dr. Breitschwert and his team have continued to publish studies on high-risk immunocompetent patients. And these include case reports of veterinarians with serious and mysterious illnesses that resolved with antibiotic therapy. Can you tell us a little bit more about these case reports? Sure. So two come to mind. The first is about a male veterinarian who had an acute illness with fever that resolved over the course of a week. However, in the next few months, he developed neurological symptoms such as stumbling, and he, his symptoms progressed to the point where he could not walk unaided, and he was diagnosed with MS. However, after he was found to be bacteremic with Bartonella, he began antibiotic therapy, and he returned to his work as a veterinary surgeon. That really highlights how important an accurate diagnosis is. Yes, and so does this story. There was a 31-year-old female veterinarian whose rheumatological and orthopedic symptoms progressed over two years. She was evaluated by experts at Johns Hopkins and Harvard, and they reported that her symptoms met the criteria for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome hypermobility type 3. She was experiencing multiple joint subluxations daily, and a previously re okay, all right, a previously refractured bone had not rehealed. She was found to be bacteremic with Bartonella cholerae and Bartonella hensleigh. Then she was treated with antibiotics, after which her joint subluxations resolved, and that refractured bone rehealed, and she went on to deliver a healthy baby. It is very exciting to hear of these patients recovering. 
Where can my viewers go to read more about Bartonella infections in veterinarians and other high-risk individuals? Well, the first place they can go is to the links that I'm going to provide in this video's description box. But they can also go to Galaxy Diagnostics' website, which is galaxydx.com. And there they have key publications on human Bartonellosis, and they also have patient stories, several of which are about veterinarians. So I am about to discuss the difficult topic of suicide among veterinarians. So if that is disturbing to any of my viewers, please skip ahead one minute. It's been in the news recently that veterinarians have a high risk of suicide. The CDC found that female veterinarians are three and a half times more likely and male veterinarians are two times more likely to die by suicide than the general population. Do you think Bartonellosis could play a part? I definitely think it could be one of many risk factors. Yes, and other risk factors could be that veterinarians work long hours, graduate with a mean of over $140,000 in student debt, and they have access to lethal drugs. I actually just saw a Washington Post article that was about this woman who had a lot of those stressors that you just listed, and she had Bartonellosis. She presented with a mystery illness that doctors couldn't diagnose for several years, which included crippling fatigue and internal swelling. And rumors spread that she was addicted to drugs and alcohol and her friends didn't take her illness seriously. And the confluence of all these factors made her want to take her own life. That is a very tragic situation. What kind of studies have been done to determine the prevalence of Bartonella infections in veterinarians and veterinary workers? That's a great question, Piper, and we don't have enough research to answer that question adequately, but we do have some preliminary research. A 2014 study compared the prevalence of Bartonella in veterinary personnel versus non-veterinary control subjects. 44% of the veterinary personnel were IFA positive and 28% were PCR positive. Of the 32 control subjects who were medical and nursing staff at Duke, only one was IFA positive, and absolutely none of them were found to be bacteremic. And wasn't there a second study done in Spain of 89 veterinary personnel? Yes, and 73% of them were seroreactive to at least one test antigen, and 7% were PCR positive. However, both of these studies used a convenient sample, so we obviously can't determine prevalence from those numbers. But what it does show us is that Bartonella bacteremia in immunocompetent patients is a lot more prevalent than previously thought. I would assume that there is a lot more research that needs to be done on the topic of human Bartonellosis. How can my viewers help raise the profile of Bartonella as a major contributor to serious disease in both humans and animals? Well, first, they can share this video with anyone that they know that works closely with animals so that they can learn about their occupational risk. And one of the best ways for your viewers to get involved is to donate to the Bartonella Project at the North Carolina State University College of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Breitschert has committed his life's work to studying this bacteria that has caused so much devastation to humans. And his, he needs funding. <laughs> His lab at NC State needs funding to define optimal treatment and to improve testing. Wonderful! I'll provide a link in the top of this video's description box to the page where my viewers can donate to the Bartonella Vector-Borne Disease Research Fund at North Carolina State. And I believe Dr. Breichwert and his team promote the notion of One Health. Can you explain to my viewers what One Health means? Well, 75% of emerging infectious diseases are zoonoses, which means that they can be transmitted between animals and humans. So One Health is a concept that recognizes that the health of humans, animals, and the planet are inextricably linked, and therefore, doctors, veterinarians, and environmental health professionals need to work together as one for better health outcomes. How can veterinarians protect themselves from the occupational risk of contracting Bartonellosis? This is a very important question because we know in flea endemic areas, the rate of bacteremia for cats can be greater than 50%. So we know that veterinarians will experience frequent and repeated exposure. Veterinarians and other people who work with animals should take care to avoid arthropod bites and feces, to avoid animal scratches and bites, and direct contact with bodily fluids from sick animals. And they should also wash their hands frequently and use protective equipment and clothing. Well, thank you so much, Bartonella Babe, for shedding light on this overlooked occupational risk of working with animals. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Health Tales for Healthy Tales. Tune in next week to watch me chase my tail.
my viewers can donate to the Bartonella Vector Borne Disease Research no. Fund. Damn it. Can you really conduct an interview from there? I don't know if that's interview behavior. This is less disgusting.